So yeah, the teams are gonna be kind of sad. You can see a gold line is gonna be playing with his Brazilians, fellow Brazilians, Ilem Itachi and Adobari. So that's actually quite nice. Amigos de Ovelio, that's Ado, and Ilem, that's Emperors of Mythology, and they're gonna be playing against Trulok with Sheldy and with Knorst. Mm, one hell of a team right there. Definitely looking forward to that. Hello, Bronze Boy. I can see as well. And Alfheim, that's a nice map. Wrath for Odin. And what was the other team? I kind of missed that slightly. Ra for Odin, and the other ones are Ra, Ra, and Zeus. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Especially considering the fact they are playing on Alfheim, which is of course a heavy eggy map. That is quite fun. Definitely gonna be curious how the players are gonna be playing and what kind of matchups we are gonna be seeing here. So Shelty is gonna be apparently in the pocket. Knorse is gonna be playing against Barry. Mm, that might be some kind of idea for them. That could be maybe working. As on the left side, of course, that's gonna be Trulog having a bit of fun against Gold Line or rather against Itachi, sorry. So maybe that could be fun, but I'm really kind of happy that we're having the best players in the teams. Gold Lion on the top side and Chelsea at the bottom side in the pockets, because that's really going to be funny to see who's going to be playing a bit better team game and who's going to be overall much more useful, especially since they're both playing Ra, the same god. So it's going to be kind of Shelty versus Gold Lion team. Let's call it like that, because they're the most prominent player, of course, players, of course, in this in this combination of players here. So let's have a look around, for example, at the gold placements and the hunt and everything like that. Barry is gonna be having quite a solid hunt on the right side. It's gonna be definitely helpful as he does have the gold kinda nicely protected. Kinda nicely protected in there. And of course, that is gonna be making him a bit kinda harder to raid, but at the same time, it's probably nothing all that major. And I'm looking at this right now. Oh yeah, there is a tree. It just wasn't visible before, okay. So no problem, it just wasn't having <laughs> the line of sight in there. I was just looking if maybe the tree line is kinda sucky and there was potentially a hole, apparently not. But Knorse is definitely gonna be happy about the medium gold mine at the back of his base. Yet again gonna be making him kinda impervious to any kind of raiding. And it seems like that nothing all that out of the ordinary should be happening for Shelty in the pocket, who's also having quite a nice position of the gold mine in there. And on the top side, that's gonna be true lock, but he doesn't really mind all that much. As other Zeus, he shouldn't be having all that much of a hard time with protecting even some kind of gold like that. Though the position of the towers is not exactly great. You can see he's having two towers at the back side, which are not gonna be doing a whole lot of guarding. For example, even not guarding those berries on the left side. So this tower is gonna be like the only one useful. So he maybe actually will want to wall about here. Maybe even use the stregger in there. But otherwise, the top side just finishing with the hunt, and he already knows where the next one is. So yeah, well, he does have everything ready for him. And I Kinda interested if maybe he will want to go for this double double deer, but I don't think so because that's really gonna be kinda risky. We'll be definitely going for the one in the middle here, that seems a bit more like it. As there are of course already gonna be some few caribus in here and he already has basically done what we wanted to do, but a bit more to the middle because he has seen a few more hunting spots that we haven't seen yet. So better building hit points for this relic, that's actually a very good relic indeed. Second relic is gonna be villagers kill animals in single shot. Well, not really that huge at this point. Another relic at the very back. Faster within a training time. It could be nice. It could be nice for the Zeus if you're gonna be seeing a late game here. It could be really useful. Favorite trickle, kind of why not? Hunk of Ra. Well, who else than a Ra should be picking it up? Well, for example, Gold Lion. As it's kind of behind his base. Better Archer Ballista, Kero Ballista, Pierce Attack. Right, next to this guy. That's not exactly huge. Maybe for Ballistae in the Imperial Age, or rather the Mythical Age, it could be working, but overall nothing really all that major. And one of the last relics that we so far see, that's gonna be cheaper myth units overall, and that is a good one. That's a really nice one, so basically a combination of this, cheaper myth units with faster training time of myth units. Giving it to Zeus, I can really definitely see a strategy going in there. That would be really quite deadly, especially if you, for example, get into the Mythical Age for the Colossi, that could be like downright scary, maybe even. And the last relic here, 5% village of wood and gold gather rates, pretty good relics all around. So players definitely shouldn't underestimate them and should be picking them up as soon as possible. So to the top side, we're gonna be having a look at the basis of the enemies of the team at the bottom. As you're gonna be of course looking at quite nice walling. He definitely is quite concerned of what's going to happen to him. So he's probably expecting maybe even some kind of Athena rush. Well, he's a Thor, he's against the Zeus, so maybe. Maybe it could be working, but to be honest, I don't expect that too much. Because of course, Trulok should be playing a bit more carefully 
all things considered. You can see that the gold line is using the middle hand as long as possible, which is definitely a nice idea and correct thinking as well. You can see that Shelty is playing quite a lot differently, a whole lot more inside his base. So it's going to be all about who's actually going to be using the... Oh, this is... This is so Will Rush. This is so Will Rush from Shelty, right? It's gonna be kinda late, but he's gathering an inordinate amount of gold right about now. A bit of a bit of wood. Going for a few more houses. I'm really kinda curious what's gonna happen here. Second DC already being captured by Barry, the defensive fan. Kinda interesting build up, but something that Norse do lately do. So it's not really all that unusual, but I'm really kinda curious what's gonna happen with Shelty here. Because he's really gathering <laughs> Insane amount of gold right about now. Getting even pickaxe in there. A purple is six. Oh, no, damn it. Five then. He does have plenty of resources at this point, so you can see that a few god powers are being used all around. That's gonna be forest fire at the very back by Barry, who is attempting all kinds of interesting things going on here. That's gonna be actually. Oh, well, he got lucky. <laughs> Well, he advanced just before he actually would be losing the budget. You know, getting in for free, so that's definitely lucky for him. I think the Valkyrie, though, is gonna be sending the budget into the Valhalla right with her, it seems like. Or maybe not. But he kinda opted not to really lose the Valkyrie. I think that he could have killed the budget, but decided not to. Right now, Temple gonna be rebuilt because, of course, he will be needing a few more priests in there. But apparently, it's not gonna be even a build rush, but that's just a whole lot different build all right about now. From Shelty, it's gonna be coming for the TC in the front. Same as seems to be the strategy for Gold Lion. So I was slightly confused in there, as it looked all kind of interesting and maybe really heading into the Will Rush, but no, in the end it's not gonna be the case, as Gold Lion is coming already for a third DC, and it's of course gonna be a bit of a rush on True Lock, who is coming for the second DC as well. So yeah, this is kinda gonna be a boom fest, or rather boom fest, for all of the players, and let's see which team is gonna be a bit better in that capacity. Because so far, you're not even, of course, the top player, Barry, is gonna be heading into some kind of offensive. He seems to be really playing kinda defensively. He's Odin, so kinda curious what's gonna happen out of that. If maybe it's gonna be even like fastly heroic right there. Or maybe even some kind of fast mythic, like maybe fast Ragnarok. Doesn't really seem kind of stupid like some kind of stupid idea. If he can actually rely on his teammate, as Shelty is gonna be using the rain first, that's very important of course for him. As that's gonna be allowing him to kinda block the rain from Gold Lion. And of course that means that gold line should be advancing to the next age later and should be having a lesser advantage from all the rain as of course Shelty is gonna be using his rain a bit later. Right, so of course all the upgrades as you would be expecting for gold line that's gonna be the same. Yep, absolutely exactly right there. As of course the three ras, the third ra is gonna be Norse and what is he actually, or rather when is he gonna be casting it? Right now I think that if, if they actually communicated properly with Shelty, which I don't think that, it, that they did, so far we haven't seen any kind of chat at all. They might be right now coordinating that Norse would be basically casting it in before gold line as well. Screwing him completely over. I think really they should do that. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was definitely right now somehow communicated. Not sure how they communicated because I don't think it was in the chat in the game. Uh, but they did definitely understand each other in that regard. Which basically means that gold line is gonna be really significantly screwed at this point. With his triple TC boom and his heroic timing should be really kind of bad. You can see Hato coming forward for Shelty already. As, yeah, well, right now there's gonna be a front TC from Itachi. And it doesn't really seem like that True Lock should be stopping it anytime soon. Yeah, he does have at least the two heroes and the centaur coming forward. But it's pretty much the only army for him. And Itachi, yeah, well, even though he's kind of trying to build a TC at the top side. Which is gonna be finishing, of course, just about now. Alright, yeah, it seems that it will. Exactly here. There's also a bit of a raiding party at the very bottom where Shelty is maybe slightly confused, or rather confused, concerned, that's the correct word I was looking for. Of all the army right here, he was flaring a bit before, because there's definitely an army that Trulog should be taking care of, and that shouldn't be up to Shelty to take care of the enemy units that are supposed to be of another player. But anyway, it's probably not gonna be any kind of significant lasting damage. As Gold Lion, is he gonna be casting his train right about now, or if he like... Maybe at this point, he doesn't really need to cast it. Because I think even with the two rains, he's gonna be having enough food. He slowed down, that's exactly as I said before. But right now I'm thinking he doesn't necessarily need his own train. And might be waiting for it, maybe wait to actually use it in some kind of tactical option. Like what kind of god powers could he be blocking? Maybe, could be blocking ceasefire. 
Could be blocking flamey weapons, well, not really, because they are on his team. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a good combination, actually. He could be covering the flamey weapons with rain. Or could he? Uh... I'm right now not certain. Right now, just completely blank. If you can cast ceasefire above rain. I think you cannot. I think you cannot. Definitely somebody correct me in the chat. Because right now I'm having completely blank. Right now of such an occurrence before. So yeah, definitely would be welcoming some kind of help. That's a bit of scouting of course by Trulog for a bit later. And the passage right there. But in the middle that's gonna be a bit of scouting going on by right now Shelty. Trying to see where his opponent is and what he's right now doing. But it's not really all that major. And it seems that it's gonna be kind of natural uh, going for gold line to the left side. To help Itachi in there in the battle. As it's apparently gonna be of course himself already coming into the base of Trulog. As what is actually right now the idea for Trulog. For his gameplay. Because right now, yeah, coming forward there. With of course quite solid right now. <laughs> quite solid Locus coming forward to basically destroy the economy of his opponent. At least for the time being. As Shaft Mine, Boso and everything is coming there as well. But nobody kinda coming into the next ages all that much, just basically the one that we would be expecting from the Egyptians. Uh, so far we haven't seen the upgrades in there, in the technologies, but with all the Migdol being, or rather with the Migdol being ready there, and the enemy one in the middle, I'm definitely curious how this is gonna be developing, because it's almost looking like that Chelty will be having an attempt to basically destroy Gold Lion, like pocket against the pocket. Whereas on the left it's gonna be left up to Itachi to fight against Trulog, and on the right side it's gonna be Knorr's against Barry. The so far, but it's not exactly established. Gonna be coming for the TC. First, he's though wanting to this, uh, to establish the hill fort so that he can protect it a bit better. I see, well, the camels with a few chariot archers are gonna be scouting around and kind of trying to keep the opponent busy, keep gold line busy, so that he cannot really help all that significantly on the left battlefield against the world, as he is already producing plenty of siege works in there. But yeah, there we go, gold line casting. His train and getting the plenty more extra economy for himself, but of course, even more for his opponent on top of that. I think that he actually, Goldline was having extra upgrade on the farms. Yeah, he definitely did have irrigation already. So he is gonna be having quite a nice bonus from this. As of course, right now you can see that even Knorr's is not having any villages on the farms in there, as he has sent everything forward in here. And he is having at least some kind of army, though. Why did he leave all of those farms intact? I'm not entirely certain. And melancholy, yeah, yeah, uh, it affects all players, but in different different level. For this, for the one player, it's 120% labor farming time, but for enemy analyze, it's only 80%. So, so yeah, there's a difference. It's of course very important if you are having a Ra against Ra, who's gonna be casting his train first, because being the second one can quite often screw you over significantly on your timing into the heroic age. There we go, we are gonna be seeing another Locus being forward. Oh, that's a lot of it. A lot of Dwarfies actually dead right there. That was quite nicely played. Dwarfies and villages, some kind of combination that was here. From Knorr's, as he is attempting to kill a few Jarls there, which is definitely not worth it at this point. He definitely needs to retreat. As in the middle, there's gonna be a bit of a help from Shelty. Coming forward with everybody being at 3 TCs, but Barry and Knorr's who are on the right side. But Knorr's is gonna be so far the only one, or rather quite soon the only one, as he's establishing his army. And well, apparently, gonna be having some kind of idea what to do with the TC. Yes. With the TC as well, as his opponent is already coming forward to that. As Shelt is finding exactly what he needs to do. That is, of course, reading the gold miners, and he's luring a frost here. Man, that is actually quite unexpected. Because at this point, I kinda can understand it, because Barry was having kinda hard time here. He could have hidden this, the villages in the back, but he probably doesn't want to be under attack when not getting gold, so that's probably the reasoning for all of that. But I'm thinking that. Not exactly how he wanted to use the frost, because right now, yeah, he's gonna be missing it in some kind of offensive capabilities. But of course, right now, gold line coming for Trulog. This is probably gonna be asking for a ceasefire, maybe? Well, yeah, right now, Shelt is saying to him, or rather telling to his teammate that if he needs to ceasefire, he definitely should be. And Trulog, exactly, <laughs> as the proper player. <laughs> making his forward, or rather, making his advance time in the forward TC. That's absolutely something you shouldn't ever do. He'll be always doing it in the back one, basically because of this situation, because if this attack came sooner, then he would be really hard pressed for the ceasefire even more than he's about now. But with the double, he really needs to do it. 
he really needs to do it fully at this point. Because of course he needs all the protection that he can get, even the fortified TC. At this point he can get away with it, but yet again, you just need to put those upgrades into the back. And see, at least he's getting masons there. So he does have some kind of justification, a lot of idols right about now here. Finishing with the Kauis, and he should be really switching his army, or rather his economy, quite significantly into the farms very soon. As Horus, Horus and Bragi, oh man. The ages are coming forward, so there's gonna be at least one Horus here, I would be expecting. Basically destroy through lock altogether, another Horus coming forward, so you can see that Knorr's not having such a bad game. He's having 45 TC just now, but it also has to be said that Knorr's and Barry, they have been kind of like taunting each other. Not really attacking each other at all, so they were having quite a solid and nice game so far. But the battles are gonna be coming forward at 50 minutes, it seems like, with the ceasefire. Right now coming forward exactly as he would be playing on a treaty mode for them. Yep, first attacks are gonna be coming forward and right now. The tornado coming into the middle of the enemy base, which... Well... Is there any kind of significant justification for that? I'm not entirely certain, I'm gonna be having this click, as we need to switch to the left side, where... Another tornado is being cast by Gold Lion. Are we gonna be seeing the third one at the same time? That would be really bad weather across the game if Shelty cast it as well. So the TC survive. Wow, with 66 hit points! <laughs> 66 hit points, it actually survived. Well, that's unlucky. The second TC did have a few more because it was quite well upgraded. Even architects are coming forward, so it's gonna be standing for a bit longer. As another tornado is coming forward right here. Into the TC for Gold Lion, and Gold Lion doesn't have Masons, so maybe that could be actually destroyed. Yeah, it definitely will be. So that's gonna be a goodbye TC. The only TC of the three tornadoes that's gonna be coming down. As we are looking at God Power is being cast absolutely everywhere. Damn <laughs> it! Flaming weapons being cast into offensive against the Rogue's front TC. It's gonna be absolutely losing it. Shifting sense right now by Knorr's to send the army somewhere. I don't know where. I don't want completely confused where he actually sent it. About here. Yeah, at the very back. That's where he sent all the army, or rather half of the army, definitely interesting, and it actually is so far not well aware of what's going on. So yeah, this was a very nice attack by a Gold Lion, but he's also dropped to only two TC, so he's gonna be heavily housed. Uh, heavily housed at this point, and that will be definitely opportunity for Shelty, who is quite valiantly pushing forward through the middle, and hoping that he can save his teammate Trulok in time, and it definitely seems that it might be working, because he's well established already with the catapults. And getting rid of, of course, all the units, but these flaming weapons armies are kinda bit of a sucky situation for him at this point. You can see heavy chariots for him, base line of upgrades is already there. Gold Lion is gonna be losing the catapult, obviously. And other upgrades are what? Mediums with baseline and iron shields already for Itachi. That's actually a very good upgrade, obviously, against the chariot arches in there. A chariot Archer for Gold Lion, having Bronze Shields and Copper Mail, that's very nice for him. As on the right, there is a bit of a battle as well still going on between Knorr's and Barry. And it really seems like they're having a bit of a 1v1, but apparently not for much longer, as Gold Lion is recognizing that maybe there could be needed a bit of help, and I kinda have to agree, because if Dera gets going in the late game, like basically any Egyptian, then he's always a pretty big threat to any kind of Norse. And you can see what kind of problems right now Barry is having against all of those catapults. Yeah, those catapults, they are deadly. With the combination of the siege towers as well, as he is having quite a significant advantage in the army. The upgrades are just on the baseline, but much more importantly, Barry, who is having only right now copper shields, he's not really having all that many military buildings, it seems like. And he's at least right now repairing the TC, getting the 65% Balder in there. So Ragnarok is gonna be coming forward, and that might be the moment. It might be the moment where Knorr's is gonna be kinda unhappy in this game finally for him. As of course he did make for a lot of grief to his opponent, who is under attack. He almost lost the TC through the tornado, but right now the tables are probably gonna be turning for them. Alright, so Gold Lion in the power of his TC at the back yet again. He's gonna be apparently taking away even a fourth from True Lock. So, what's gonna be right now the next course of action? Balder that we have seen, Bronze Shields, Magi for Shelty. That's of course for the better uh, mercenaries. Winter Harvest, yeah, that's nice as well. 45 TC for Itachi. It's gonna be important to help him push forward with Gold Lion on the left side. Now, there we go with Ragnarok, and it really doesn't look all that well for the team on the left at this point. Because they are being pushed on Trulok quite significantly. Shelty apparently doesn't have any kind of significant chance to do anything significant in the middle. Because he does just doesn't have the correct units for that. He's having literally only chariot archers with a few mercenaries. With this thing cloud around them right there. As well, 
That doesn't seem like a combination unit that should be really helping his teammate all that much in there. And we would he definitely need him. A mythical age Zeus and the proper units from him in the mythical age. In the meantime, of course, the heroes of Ragnar are coming forward in full strength against Knorr. So let's see how he's gonna be able to deal with that. Not many upgrades. It could be making things a whole whole lot easier for Knorr's. But he should be definitely building plenty of towers. Not really barracks, but just spend towers. If you are expecting Ragnarok, you just need to spend towers and just basically at any kind of shooting that you can, even if it's a building, it's always gonna be help, helping you quite significantly. And yeah, this is gonna be really quite problematic for Knorr because he seems to be not exactly ready for that. But I'm kind of slightly worried that maybe he could be get, getting away with it because Barry is missing all the upgrades on his units. But his Heroes of Ragnarok is gonna be making them significantly squishy. And even though he doesn't have to fight against all that many buildings, every building in that situation counts. And that is something that you really shouldn't underestimate, shouldn't underestimate at all. So there we go, I'm still kind of mo moving forward as Shifting Sands are being cast. Well, this is not really the Shifting, shifting Sands, that was. It was just the Plenty Wall being cast by Trull, who is just advancing to Imperial Age, aka okay, Mythical Age, damn it. Not Age of Empires, not Age of Mythology. But the attack is of course getting quite stronger, as another fortress is right now falling. And Trullock is down to only 1 TC. Whereas much more importantly, Trullock is at 4. And he's gonna be able to even supply the mercenaries, you can see, also nicely upgraded into the battle. And even the nice champion chariots right now from Shelte, with very good upgrades, all bronze. Don't really exactly seem to be enough, especially with the Titan Gate. Titan coming forward, 4 gold line, and he's gonna be even building it just now. He doesn't have all that many upgrades, just the copper shields, or rather iron shields. Which is kind of everything that he needs at this point. Looking at the units that he's actually fighting, especially from Shelty in there, it doesn't seem all that impossible that he might be really having quite a good chance to finish with the Titan Gate. I don't think there are. Well, there is a. There is actually something still to be said for the Underworld Passage from Trulok. I think they shouldn't really underestimate that all that much, so maybe he could be like building up armies somewhere at the back. And trying to really go for it because right now he's coming for the armory, so Fortune Full Impulse is apparently coming forward for him. Maybe, but first it signifies flood control. He's, re he's searching absolutely everything. He's apparently having quite a lot of economy at this point. Secrets of the Titans also for Barry. Interestingly enough, yeah, he's having tons of economy. Um, just hoping that his teammates don't need that. Uh, that's gonna be number five then. Shelty. He could be using maybe a bit of gold, but nothing all that major. And Knorr's. He's kind of fine in there as well, but he has of course lost the front TC because of all the heroes of Ragnarok which are, or rather who are, slowly dying, but not really fast enough. As you can see that right now Goldline is definitely thinking about the 5th TC as well, trying to get a bit too greedy maybe, but it's gonna be working because of course at this point he's gonna be helping himself quite significantly with even his presence on that point of the map. And well, well, let's not be too hasty here. Let's not be too hasty here, that's gonna be Titan Gate coming forward, of course from the Teal player. But much more importantly, it seems like a Trulok will be able to actually get the second TC up again. As... Kinda, I don't... I right now don't understand what's actually the problem right now for Trulok, or rather for a Gold Lion. Oh well, he's actually completely strained, yeah he cannot produce army for 5 TCs. And he's gonna be having, or rather right now he's having 5. So he cannot really produce the pop limit, he's having at least a bit of gold extra, but otherwise the economy is completely drained. So since he is forced to spend a bit of army on the right side, it seems that it might not really exactly be all that helpful on the left battlefield, as apparently Itachi is not having enough pull and push to actually do anything significant there. You can see he's missing a few upgrades, only heavy throwing axemen, but otherwise bronze, bronze and iron, so he is kinda getting there. But those Halepoli, they are definitely good unit, and I'm just waiting when, potentially, there's gonna be at least one attempt to kill at least one of the titans, because I really think they should do it, as I don't think they can defend against two titans. Against one, quite possibly, quite possibly against two, I don't exactly see that. Because this one is gonna be coming down quite soon. The earthly embodiment of the god Ra is just now descending into the battlefield. And let's see where he's gonna be coming. I'm thinking he's just gonna be punishing the two walk on the left side, because kinda why not? That time it's gonna be 20 population limit less for Gold Lion, but he's already swimming in pop limit, so he doesn't really mind too much at this point. He does have all that he needs for that. And it's of course gonna be making his game a whole lot easier and of course quite a lot harder for all the opponents. As apparently Shelty is not really helping on the left, battle left battlefield all that much. You can see that it seems like Rogue is able to handle it just by himself for the time being. As Shelty is right now fully helping on the right, 
having just medium Axeman, could be using a few more upgrades on that line, but otherwise Bronze, Bronze and Iron, so it's not really that bad as maybe could have been looking a bit before. Anyway, freeing the Titan for Barry is also on its way. Hmm, as interestingly enough, the Titan is not gonna be coming to destroy Trulok, but maybe destroy Shelter in the middle, so that he cannot properly help his teammates on both sides. It really seems like that it's basically the case. Can see a lot of temples being built, but it's probably gonna be a bit too late, I'm thinking. As the gold line is already also kinda sneakily coming forward. That's a very nice sneak by him, as his opponents are apparently unaware of. And it's gonna be supplying plenty of units, of course, and plenty of kinda... Yeah, you can see the elephants right, coming forward as well, that's very nicely done. Very nicely done, very nicely played. Quite nice idea, I'm thinking ahead. And it's gonna be a heavy surprise and Shelty coming for Architects in the front DC yet again. This time he's not gonna be getting away with it, as Trulo did on the left side. Yep, he just need to cancel it because that's not gonna be finishing anyway. He should be making for that in the back one. He should be making for it in the back one. And is he gonna get lucky here or not in the end? Oh, 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 he did. <laughs> he did actually get lucky in the end. Well, that was one last hit from being destroyed, which then he did one extra hit. Maybe two extra hit from the Titan to actually keep it still alive for a bit longer. But yeah, well, it was just kind of doomed from the get-go. But interesting, he was actually lucky with that. And he was able to finish just in time with the upgrade. As the elephants are going to be destroying all the villages and everything else. As Bellerophon is going to be helpful and the only hero so far with this speed that is just now paying with his life for fighting against the Titan against him and let's check as that's gonna be another one just now coming forward yep maybe raiding just a bit too late that was an idea maybe for the underworld passage but it just didn't materialize in time which means that this troll is gonna be coming forward and quite definitely trolling the master troll right here let's see how he's gonna be liking that as we are coming with a few more still heroes of ragnarok which were basically just kept safe building and uncovering the titan in there and of course with all the mercenary battles between <laughs> between knors and gold line that is pretty much all the army here that we're having and apparently he doesn't have all that much extra right now so far knors yeah he's only added two tc so he kind of explains a whole about a whole lot as gold line though is down to only four tc as all those helepoli that were coming forward that we have seen a bit before from trulog are definitely destroying a lot of buildings in that so there we go with even, of course, a few more heroes of Ragnarok coming there from Itachi, and they're gonna be a whole lot more scarier because they are fully upgraded. They are fully upgraded right now from Itachi, and that shouldn't be really something that even even Trulok should be able to handle. But as a Zeus, we should be just spamming Myrmidons. Yeah, he is. Champion Myrmidon with copper shields in that. Kind of, well, who, who cares in this battle? Bronze and bronze, that's kind of solid, but definitely irons would be helpful. But still, he does have a chance because he does have the correct country units. And if he can keep at least the town center alive, something might be still happening on the left battlefield. It really might. Uh, so far, the attack on the on the trade is not really going on. You can see there definitely would be some kind of opportunity with which they could be pushing forward. But the Titan is there. Uh, Radu, well, Myrmidons, they are a very strong unit and they do have bonus against any non-Greek unit. So they're gonna be good. If you do have the economy for them, I think they might be better than, than Hippas Pists. I would be arguing that they might be better. Because they are just overall better units, so you could be even dealing with other with other types and in team games especially. But you can just go for Hippas Pists as well, they're gonna be solid also. Just basically just that Myrmidons overall are a solid unit against any kind of Norse, as Norse do have problems with them. As pretty much the most out of any civilization. Norse do suffer against them the most. At the end, there we go, the TC is down, and what's right now gonna be the plan for Knorr's? He does have the upgrades, but not really all that many of them, bronze, bronze and copper still. But right now, without the population limit, it's gonna be a whole lot harder. As another Titan, of course, well, another Titan, the other Titan from Gold Time, is just now, of course, making life very difficult, sorry, very difficult for Shelty, dropping into only two TCs. And as even though he's gonna be dying here very early, very early and very soon. In the middle, it's really not easy as Barry is pushing forward with, of course, five giants and elephants that are right now already heavy. Not really champions yet, but fully upgraded. Are still coming forward at another Titan. <laughs> it's right now coming from Itachi. Let's see. I'm gonna be just. It's gonna be so amusing if somehow the team at the bottom, Shelty's team, can actually survive this. If that did happen, that would be really epic. It would be really epic, but that would really. 
Rikwa is some kind of inhumane effort at this point. Inhumane effort because Knorr is really in a tough situation. I really don't see how he could be defending against that. This Titan is gonna be fairly quickly dying. He's only at some hundred hit points. Don't think he's gonna be able to even take down this DC. Might not really be able to do so all that much, but there we go with Titan 4 actually Drulok. Can he actually keep him alive and build him? I think that he can. He certainly can. Because you can see that it actually doesn't have any army left. He has lost plenty of those heroes of Ragnarok already. And the rest of them are attempting to build to build a Titan. And a few of them are actually cheering them on. Just having a bit of a nice feeling of seeing others work. Yeah, it's quite nice feeling actually. I'm sure that everybody knows that. <laughs> That's usually quite fun. Now as the Titan is coming forward, he's definitely gonna be aiming for the Titan Gate. And yep, yeah, there we go. Just the shifting sands were kinda enough at this point, of course, from Gold Line to drop a few elephants right on the spot. So Titan Gate is gone. And it's gonna be up to Shelty probably to build it. But Shelty is back to three TCs. So he might be able right now. He's gonna be dropped to two soon as well. But he does have the correct army with Knorr's to destroy the stroll very soon. You can see how fast he's actually dying. He's actually really dying very quickly. So he might be killing just one PC and that's gonna be kinda it. You can see even the Siege are a good idea. Uh, are they actually... I'm right now not sure if Siege Towers are useful against the Titan. Because I'm not sure if they're using the Pierce attack or Crush attack. Against Titan you need to use Crush attack, so Catapults are good. But from what I see here... Well, due to the sound, I would be guessing they are using the Crush attack. But they are also shooting. I'm, I'm really confused right now. Because when you hear like the... I don't know how to describe the sound. Like the punching sound or something that's crash damage into the Titan. So I'm assuming that it's actually from the Siege Towers. But it's kind of illogical because they're apparently shooting at him with arrows. But it seems that it might be doing actually crash damage for some reason. I'm really confused at this. Uh, but anyway... I don't think that Siege Towers are exactly the greatest unit. Catapults would be a whole lot better as this one is still alive. Better off on his incarnation number two and the villagers even. <laughs> even the villagers help him. Well, Shelty doesn't need that all that much. And troll number two is gonna be coming forward. Gonna be trolling the other troll in the game uh, who is in yellow so far. Yeah, let's see who's gonna be better of those two. But much more importantly, of course, right now, Buddy has been able to take a front DC from Knorr's. And even though he's try quite sneakily trying to take it down with a catapult through the right side, he has noticed right now Buddy, and he's gonna be putting a stop to that, it seems. Maybe that's a good idea to stop the temple before he's gonna be destroying uh, the DC, because of course it's gonna be coming down a lot easier. One more shot. Oh, didn't get it, but this one is gonna get it. Okay, this one is gonna definitely get it, as if you. More ballista are coming forward, of course, from the deal player to just basically control the situation overall. And it doesn't unfortunately seem like that Chelsea will be able to hold on to 3 TCs as Goldline is finally having the champion elephants coming forward with the attack. But Towers, nice idea from Chelsea as Trulog has lost the 45 TC on the left side as well to an uh, attack. Or it's actually not there, it was actually at the bottom. It just last throws of this titan he was able to take it down it's highly unfortunate for true so right now he will be maybe attempting to take a tc in the front but with another titan inside his base even though he's nicely ready with all the fortresses he's unfortunately popped quite heavily and only only three villages are probably not gonna be exactly enough against all of the army that is coming his way in there okay yeah so the titan killers are coming forward it's gonna be titan number three for them <laughs> Yeah, they, they may be even surviving really all three battles at this point. They're really doing a good job. They've made their life's mission to destroy titans of their opponents. Yeah, well, let's see how fast they're gonna be able to kill this one. But all of those buildings here, they're definitely gonna be helping quite significantly. To see how fast he's dropping or if he's 100 points down on the hit points. But the rock is up with... The heroes coming forward as well, it's gonna be Jason, Odysseus and Heracles coming forward quite soon indeed. But in the middle of course, oh well, Knorr's was able to take the TC down in the end. Okay, so that's pretty nicely done. But he's still having to face plenty of army and Goldline coming for another TC for himself. He definitely needs it and needs it, well, kinda wants it more than needs it. <laughs> but he wants it because if he can actually take the TC here, then he will be producing mercenaries into the middle of the enemy base. And that's of course always valuable. And why you usually want Egyptians to take the TCs rather than any other rather than anybody else in the team. Because in the late game you just do have the economy for all the mercenaries and everything. So yeah, why can't I, why not? And if he can keep at least a few catapults going still, Knorr's from... Yeah, he's definitely working on that. If he can keep them up... Yeah, I don't know what he's exactly. 
and keep the DC at least unguarded or rather unguarded, untaken, then it might be kind of reasonably working. But at this point, Loki is losing a bit of economy in there, which I don't think he was really needing all that much or rather using all that much. Building another fortress. As Shield is helping as much as he can, and the Titan is already down to almost half health. Dying very soon in there, but of course with all the army already right now champion and fully upgraded as we have seen a whole lot before, and it's gonna be getting quite tricky. As Green still does have a bit of population limit, he has taken the front TC from his opponent, and with gold line established even a migdol in there, it's gonna be getting a whole lot trickier on the population limit department, and they are of course getting inevitably closer to the trade route, and once that is kinda gonna be gone, yeah, well, the game is gonna swell pretty much. Uh, so yeah, that's right now gonna be resigned. As Proloc is seeing that he cannot really defend on the left side all that much with only one TC. Shelter is just not gonna be able to help enough, as he's only at two TCs as well, having a problem with the third TC in the middle. And well, on the right, Knorr's we have seen, was also kinda struggling to keep the TC down. And once it was up, the situation, situation was just getting next level problematic. It was, it was actually a fun game, rather. <laughs> It was kind of a fun game, it took three titans from the opponents to push forward. Though I kind of have to slightly question if maybe the titans weren't actually slowing things down a bit. I mean, for gold line, they probably were. For the other players... I mean, when you are actually after Ragnarok, Norse after Ragnarok, I think that titan is actually a very natural transition for you and will be very helpful. So I think for them it makes actually quite a good of sense, quite a good sense. But for Goldline, I think it was kind of slowing him down a bit in there. But maybe he could have been a bit more efficient with the extra 20 population limit into normal army and could have stormed either through the middle or through the left side a whole lot more efficiently. But anyway, that was a really nice game. Let's check into the post game. Uh, well, Heimdall, actually, Shelty was helping in quite a bit. Shelty was trying to push through the middle, basically buying the attention of Gold Lion. So he was helping him through that as well. It's not like he wasn't helping Trulok at all. But Shelty also, there was a moment where Shelty had to help uh, Knorr's for a moment. Against the Ragnarok and everything, which was definitely needed. As Knorr's just wasn't ready for that with towers and everything, as he should have. As of course it has to be said that Egyptians are having the best defense against Ragnarok, obviously, if they are prepared. But yeah, well... I think that Shelty played really well, really well, and he was the major reason why the game was still going on. Because it really seemed like it, it could have been over like 10-15 minutes ago, definitely. Like about the first Titan it could have been over, I think. If Shelty, Shelty didn't really play it as well as he did. You can see 434 military count. That's really a lot of units, that's really a chief reason why they were still alive on the left side. So nice game by Shelty. Nice game indeed. Good research counts, but only Knorr's was having a bit of a problem in that. It's kind of expected, as the other players, they were kind of high rated in the game. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Yeah, that's classic Rado. Especially the old school, right? You can see Mercenary is the most used unit for gold line and Shelty. Okay, GG.